Well, good morning, everyone. This is uh, Adventure Vin, way overdue for a video. So this is going to be about my camping equipment, uh, motorcycle camping equipment, what I take with me and how I use it. Uh, there are a lot of videos out there where people will everything laid out before a trip and then they'll show you everything packed. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's my, my mess from this morning. All that stuff fits on that motorcycle. I'm going to go over some of the motorcycle stuff later. This isn't really going to be about the KLR or how it, how it configured. It's really what I bring on the KLR to make motorcycle camping a little more enjoyable. So uh, just let me jump right in. You know, and I do all this stuff with my like, Samsung 6, Samsung 7 cell phone. Hey, it works. I'm happy with it. So let's start with my tent. Uh, I got the sun behind me. It's early morning. I'm up in the vicinity of, of um, Blaine, Washington. Um, 13 miles of the south of Canadian border. So I've had this tent for a while. I've used it for different trips. It's called a Cabela's Gateway Dome 2. Um, now, I don't think they sell it anymore. I know it was very affordable. Uh, I like it. It's a two-man tent, and I take about that much space. Unfortunately, I'm trying to get the sun, I'm trying to get the sun to um, behind me, but my shadow's casting on it. Uh, below the tent, I just got a brown tarp. You can, tarps are very good universally. I use it as a footprint. Those are the two dry bags I carry. You see them on my motorcycle pictures, one on either side of my panniers. One thing about the dry bags and carrying the Rainfly actually is, um, as you can see, there's some moisture and condensation. I also cover the motorcycle with the, thing, with the cover at night because it will get wet. A lot of people will not bring a Rainfly to reduce weight and space. I always have the Rainfly, it provides protection and some privacy and also stability with having tie downs to the guy wires. So going inside the tent, I have, uh, um, I should probably show you the sleeping pads separately. This is a great little inflatable sleeping pad I have. Almost everything, everything I have here, um, you can probably find on Amazon. This is one of those um, pump, internal pump. I gotta show you guys how to use this. It's really awesome. I'll do a different video on it, on how this pumps up with air. You, you step on it. Um, it has a little sponge in there and you step on it and it inflates itself pretty quick. You don't have to use breath or, or a machine or anything. And it's not one of those foam ones where it's foam and then you have to wait for it. It's actually hollow inside except for one area has a foam port that you, that you pump on. I'll show you that later. It's hard to explain. I do carry a wider than not sleeping bag. I like the... Um, the flannel is very comfortable, it's very wide. I'm a very big guy. I've tried mummies, I just won't sleep through the night. I sleep really good with this. Uh, I love the material and it packs down fairly, um, fairly good, I guess, but this isn't one that's preferred, but I use it. Uh, this isn't really a video of, um, hey, uh, this, this works great, you gotta do it. It's almost like just sharing with family and friends what I'm doing and if somebody's watching this, gets an idea well well great you know leave a comment or ask a question i'll be sure to get back to you um this is a, a fleece hat i got when i was in the military i use it for sleeping always carry it with me in my in my bag uh this is a real this is another cabela's product it's actually a, a real goose down jacket very compactable i actually wear that at night as one more layer of installation and it's very comfortable um very packable and that's part of my my tent gear, I guess you could say. And then way in the corner, for all you prior military people, that's a poncho liner. Um, so it may seem like a redundant piece of equipment to carry, but anyone who has been in the military knows about those poncho liners. They're so um, universal, multifaceted, multi-purpose. It's just a really great thing to carry along. So that's, and then another thing about the two-man tent that I like is that you do have Obviously a one-man tent can be too cramped, but a two-man tent allows for one person to uh, move around, get dressed, sit up, read, look at maps at night, stay out of the weather if it happens. And you have an area here where you can store stuff in case it rains. There's my one of my, one of my lamps. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on the lamps. There's a, a portable Bluetooth speaker and my iPod. I use that for entertainment. I know that's old technology, but me and also can hook it up to my helmet one new thing i got <coughs> on camping were these solar actually my wife got them for me so most of the cool stuff my wife gets so these solar panels unfortunately at campsites 
I'm not plugged in. Of course I could charge stuff. I have multiple ports on the motorcycle, but what's nice is that uh, when I get done riding, if it's early morning like this or in the evening, I hook these things up and my wife got me that and she also got me this. They weren't together, but this is a, uh, a charger pack. So right now the sun is charging this. I can also do this on my motorcycle, but I like to see how my equipment works. And I did need it for sure when I was in Death Valley and that worked out great. My second one sitting over here, um, which worked really well. I bought this with my buddy, Jeff. Jeff Holzclaw was with me when I got this one. Um, I was charging my cell phone on that and I started in the morning when I was making breakfast and my cell phone was like on 68. And when I unplugged to do the video, it already jumped up to like 88 or something like that within a matter of maybe 20 minutes. So that one folds in half. Both these are very durable and, com and compactable. They fit in my gray trunk on my, um, my KLR. So those things I've used before, there is equipment that I have brought out, I've never used, and by the third time, I ditch it. Uh, these gray bags, by the way, one is just a change of clothes of what I'd wear in normal riding, and the other one is all wet weather gear and cold weather gear. One other device I have I'm using today is this guy. Oh, you can see them. So let me see if you can hear it. The marine forecast for the northern inland waters today. West wind 5 to 15 knots. Wind waves 2 feet or less. Let me turn it off. Tonight, southwest wind 15 to 20 knots. Okay, so what that is, that's just a, that's a, a two AA batteries, an AM FM NOAA receiver. So um, I can listen to local news. Uh, yeah, everyone's got cell phones and... You know, I'm right now I'm using my cell phone to film this, this video, but uh, that's small and compactable enough. I like it. I like redundant or um, not redundant technology, but uh, legacy technology where if I don't have cell phone coverage, um, I'm also got, I'm so close to the border, I'm getting Canadian news on that. Uh, it has FM, AM, and when I, was, when I was prepping for my breakfast this morning, instead of like searching and looking on my cell phone for the local weather, I use that. I also have three different GPSs. I have an inReach, I have the Garmin that's on my motorcycle, and I have my motorcycle GPS, or the Zoom, the Zumo or something, and um, they all will pull in some weather also. And of course my cell phone. But that's just a nice little device to have when you're setting up, and I can listen to music, listen to the radio, listen to weather reports. Uh, most of the stuff I'm showing you, I don't remember, I believe I got that on Amazon. I did a, I did a close up of the, uh, the name of it, maybe under 20 bucks. Um, the next thing I'm gonna jump to is my stove. The reason why is because I bought an MSR multi-fuel stove that runs off of white gas and uh, unleaded, and I would carry that with me all the time. It's bulky, a little cl on the clumsy side. Uh, it's great versatility wise, it's great heat wise. But, you know, for this type of camping, these little pocket rocket knockoff stoves that hook up to the MSR fuel cans are, are plenty, are, are, are good enough. Um, I like that a lot. It's just quick on and off, uh, boils my water really good. And the cool, one other cool thing I like about it, let me pop it off real quick, is that anybody who camps, either backpack or motorcycle camping, you know, we like to utilize our space as good as possible. So this will go right inside my Stanley. Uh... So, well, excuse me. So you see how it nests in there? I put that in there and then I collapsed the stove, everything. It wasn't, Stanley, was, it wasn't designed. In fact, this little st stove or pot thing, it actually comes like this with two of their own little green heavy duty plastic cups and then this lid. But I ditched the plastic cups to carry my stove. And that works out fine because another nesting thing is I have these, I have two of these guys and instead of the plastic ones, I nest that right inside. So all pretty much compactable. I have another cup here that goes, this one sits like that. So I can pack that away, compactable. I'm a big fan of getting these lids. They're kind of hard to find sometimes. But what's nice about putting the lids on it reduces the time it takes to boil water, 
which means that it reduces the fuel consumption that you have to use. It also um, keeps things clean and <laughs> that bugs and stuff don't fly on it, fly into it. Uh, this is, I, I um, scavenged this out of one of our other bigger um, cook sets. This is a pan I haven't really used too much. This thing here, it's actually a stove that you can put like a heat tab or other sources of heat. And what that would do is that if you had that, I apparently I've used it before. I don't remember which, what I used for a heat source, but then that would sit on top. And it's not redundant to carry because once again, it nests, it nests like that. This is just a bag full of my cords. I got at REI, those are all my power cords. This was really good. I had this for breakfast. Fred Meyer in the Northwest was selling um, these pouches, buy one, get one half off. Uh, I just had this. It was really, really good, really quick to make. Um, if you're gonna eat uh, out of bags like that, cause they're, this is pretty a short, this is kind of a shorter one. Most of these dehydrated meals are a little bit taller and serve two people. Get yourself one of these long spoons these long titanium spoons. These aren't cheap for what they are, but um, I love mine. It's, um, like I said, most of these pouches are about another three inches taller. Matter of fact, I have one in the, um, I have one in the tent, I'll show you. I don't, I don't like making these videos go too long because honestly, they get boring. So, okay, so uh, this is, this one's fettuccine Alfredo. So if you look at the profile, see how tall that is? That's what makes, that's what makes these spoons so, uh, um, so important to have. Now you get a good, now you get a good reference. <coughs> you know, last night, I cooked this up last night and I picked these up along the way. They're not very compactable. They're not camper friendly, but I pick one or two up once in a while. They're just easy, just heat, go in heat, especially at night. But after I get done using it, I keep one of these cans for the duration of my campsite to put stuff like that in and to wash with and stuff. So once I use it, I rinse it out real good and I just use it as a utility thing until I leave camp. Um, one other camping item that uh, I just used for the first time was this microfiber towel. It was bigger than I thought. I bought it at a military exchange when I was still active duty. I, 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 I would say the dimensions of it uh, I'm six feet tall and this is about five and a half to six feet. It's microfiber. And then my wife got me a bigger one, the same type of material. And so I have two of them. They're very compactable. I may only have to ever carry one. I thought one would stay wet. So when I took a shower last night at the facility here, um, I thought, man, there's no way this thing's going to dry me off. Well, as soon as it did, it dried me off very efficiently, dried me off very efficiently. And then I thought, man, it's gonna take forever for it to dry. I just draped it over my motorcycle um, and it was dry almost immediately. It was, it was unbelievable, uh, really, really efficient. So I'm glad I have two. One other thing I wanna point out, this is crossover from camping to, oh, hold on, let me turn it off. This is a crossover from camping and motorcycle gear. It's one of these jump starter things. The jumper cables are inside the motorcycle. But what I used it for last night was, um, it has USB capabilities to charge your phone or any other device, but this will jump, you know, an automobile very, very efficiently. And this has saved my butt on my Route 66 trip as far as like when I left my lights on before I became a real disciplined rider. Um, one other part I want to incorporate as far as camping goes is my motorcycle, but it's the motorcycle uh, cover. I had take it, I just took it off. I travel with the motorcycle cover. Um, I like to cover my motorcycle because I have so much stuff exposed. Um, I'm afraid people mess around with it. So I cover my motorcycle on long stops. If I'm going to museums, I also put my hub locks on. I lock it up as much as I can. But last night I covered it. And when I woke up this morning, um, I don't know if I can get me in this shot or not. But when I woke up this morning, there was dew all over the tent, all over my dry. I, nothing was wet. I didn't get anything wet. Uh, but there was plenty enough moisture and dew all over the tent, all over the motorcycle. Um, my dry bags, those gray dry bags I have. Uh, so it's good to cover it. I just don't want to deal with anything wet. I don't want to sit on a wet seat. Um, I took it off and by the time as the sun's coming up, it's drying out pretty well here. And that was probably a bad shot because of uh, the sun's coming up. But that's, that's kind of it. I don't want to say in a nutshell, but that's kind of what I have on my camping. This is my 30 liter. That's my, this is my 30 liter bag here. 
that's this 30 liter bag is what I throw in um, tent uh, basically everything you see there everything there tent wise mat wise all that stuff it goes into this bag sits behind me kind of gives me some good back support carry a citronella citronella candle helps out um, and then uh, this lighter and this is one of those flexible ones so it's easy to pack I do like having that it's bulky but I've it paid dividends uh, let me talk about this real quick so this is the ideal green camp soap biodegradable great stuff right here's the deal this is a little bit more pricey it's about four bucks from what I'm holding in my hand you can get and this is four ounces you can get for $1.80 you can get a regular dove one that's uh, about seven ounces for a yeah, dollar 80 but what i do like about it is a very durable container very very solid so once i use this i just refill it i just refill that so um that's about it i haven't done a real campsite thing before there's stuff i'm sure i left out but it's been um uh, this is a really good spot i'm going to be here one more night going to go do some sightseeing i am going to do a review and commenting on wet weather gear for um wet weather gear for riding in the rain and keeping dry and keeping warm that'll be later on tonight i guess but uh like subscribe and get out there and ride um for my friends and family you know that i've been trying to get out and on my own and have some solitude for a while my motorcycle and i found it uh i'll probably be on the road for another couple of days look forward i'm gonna be doing more videos i know i've been getting more subscribers and they're probably saying Hey, this guy doesn't do videos. It's just been a very, very busy month. All right, take care, everybody. Enjoy. And if you get out there, um, most of the stuff I have, you can find on Cambela's or Amazon. Any specific questions about any of the items I've shared with you, uh, please ask, and I'll try to get some more detailed description out there to you. Take care. Have a wonderful day.